Well, thanks so much for jumping on. I know it's short notice and everybody's in a frenzy around here and UW fans are upset. And, you know, it's uh, I'm curious before we get into your article. And again, you can find it on The Athletic. Uh, really good stuff there. Just uh, any surprise on your end? I, I was telling my co-host Dave here that I, I was more worried about a vacancy at Michigan because he's got some connections to Michigan in that area and everything. So I was more worried, oh, if Harbaugh leaves Maybe they come after him. I, I guess I didn't give a proper amount of uh, respect to Alabama coming after him. Was there any surprise for you? There's a little surprise, to be honest, just because, you know, with this job, much like what you just said, I mean, it's a way different dynamic. I mean, Kalen is from South Dakota. Um, you know, Michigan, yes, they just won a national title. But you're at Alabama. It's the SEC different part of the country but you're also replacing the greatest college football coach of all time i mean that's just that is quite a burden and it's also just such a different dynamic down there but i would say this you know just knowing kalen a little bit and certainly knowing a lot uh, you know people who have gotten too close to him he's different and he probably could handle it more than just about any of the coaches i think that were considering you know, so it's credit to Alabama that they were able to land him um, and convince him that, yes, we have everything you need to, to do this job. You know, I think you got a guy who's got supreme confidence in what he's doing. He's also a guy who, you know, is very, I mean, I, I just from, I know coaches, and I heard from one of them who, who used to coach in the SEC, who coached with him, just raves about him. I said, how well do you think he'll recruit in the SEC? And he goes, I think he'll do great. It'll, you know, if he has Courtney Morgan, then he'll hire good, good assistants. And the biggest thing is he will work at it and he will be the most genuine guy in that conference of head coaches. So it'll resonate. And I, I, you know, I wouldn't doubt him. Bruce, this is, it's just fascinating to me, just having had, you know, a number of coaches and, uh, what, what is it about this guy? I mean, he's he's got what a hundred and four and twelve record. Um, you know, it, it just took two years at Fresno State, two years here, and now he's you know he's coach of the uh, of the premier college football team in the country. What is there a couple of little? You've been around him a little bit. What, is there a couple of takeaways or things that you notice that are so special, other than the X's and O's? Yeah, I mean, that was a story that I really tried to get into that very thing. What is it about this guy who was able to win at a, you know, a staggering rate? You know, because, again, he's a guy that UW fans now know who he is. But I think if he walked into, like, any big sports bar anywhere outside of Seattle and South Dakota and maybe Fresno, that people wouldn't know who he was. And so when you talk to, to all these guys about him, one of the biggest things is his people skills and how he relates to people. There's a calmness and a humility there that really helps him. I think it helps him in terms of like he's able to think and know what's important and know what's not important. And I think for football coaches, sometimes they get bogged down in the wrong things. And this is a guy who – is able to convey a lot of confidence in the people around him, whether it's the players or the coaches, he's connected to everybody around him in a way that maybe a lot of guys aren't. And I think because he exudes so much confidence and poise, you know, I mean, that's another thing that came up a lot was just, he never gets flustered. And Tom Allen, who I talked to, who, who was his boss at Indiana with the head coach when he was the OC in the big 10, He's like, he never gets flustered, and that's really a gift because that's just something, no matter which coach, I mean, look, even the guy he's replacing, Nick Saban, we've seen Nick Saban have, like, plenty of meltdowns on the sideline. He absolutely looks like he's getting flustered, mm-hmm. you know, and and so that's why I think this team was so great in in close games. They were uncanny knack for winning, you know, then, and I just think it goes to the, the, the demeanor he has and the vibe he creates around him. Do you think, uh, again, as you might imagine, Husky fans upset with the move, feels like he's kind of a mercenary, just hopping from one job to the next to the next, you know, and we'll see where it ends. But, you know, people pointing to, well, look what Mike Norville did. He committed to Florida State and Lanning in Oregon. He committed to Oregon. Sarkeesian, he's staying in his, like all these coaches who elected to stay. Now, I don't know if they were made official offers or were true candidates or what happened there, but 
those they're being pointed to as the example. That's how you remain true and you've got integrity and you stay with your school and the commitment you made to your kids. And here's DeBoer again, two years here, two years there. He just moves on. Is that a, is that a fair picture being painted of him? I mean, I get it. That, that is the unfortunate part. That's the transactional nature of college football. You know, you don't see it in, you know, the NFL because the way the rules are set up where head coaches ping pong around, if they have success here, they move on to you know bigger cities or bigger markets in college football. I, you know, it's not surprising you go from Fresno state to Washington if you do well. And I don't, you know, again, I, I wouldn't, Say not only it's going to make anybody feel any better in Seattle or in the state of Washington, but you know you're basically going from a, an elite program in a cool city to the greatest you know program right now in college football. And you know, Kalen DeBoer may you know we'll wait to hear exactly what he says about this, but I suspect he is drawn to the challenge of being the guy to replace Nick Saban and the greatest coach of all time, and that's something. <coughs> Hey Bruce, so uh, where where do we stand? I mean, we, we're talking about uh, guys uh, leaving in the transfer portal, um, and then you know, as far as a, a replacement for Kalen uh, DeBoer, you got a list of names here, including Jed Fish uh, down in Arizona, who uh, had had a really good year. What's your who do you think's the the leader in the clubhouse so far? Yeah, I think it's interesting in this regard. You know, you have a really strong candidate internally in, in Ryan Grubb, and obviously he spent a long time. You know, it was, was way back, you know, with, with DeBoer at, in an NAIA level. Um, the, there's a couple of things that make this search kind of unique. One, you know, some of these players are going to be on their fourth head coach if they stay, you know, if they were part of the 2019 Chris Peterson class. Go from Chris Peterson to Jimmy Lake to obviously Kale and then whoever gets it. Wow. And so you have that. You also have the Michigan search that we think is going to happen. You know, if and when Jim Harbaugh leaves, that may compl- complicate this search a little bit. Um, and then the other part of it, because this is you've had some ter- so much turnover at Washington, the last time they had an internal candidate, and it was a guy we all thought was going to do really well, and it was Jimmy Lake, and that didn't go well. That's no, that's not fair to Ryan Grubb. They're completely different situations and different coaches and different personalities. But does does Washington here say, hey, we're going to have a full-blown search, and do they look and say, hey, you know, we're going to try to hire somebody who's who has head coaching experience as we navigate the move to the Big Ten and deal with all this stuff? Um, I think Ryan Grubb is a really good candidate. I'm surprised that a San Diego State or a bunch of other pretty good jobs that came open didn't try to scoop him up or weren't able to scoop him up. If it's not him, you know, I think Jed Fish would be a really strong candidate for Washington, he has done an amazing job at Arizona. They were horrific when he got there, and this year, this year, they just won ten games. You know that's something to do there, and they're going to be really good next year if he stays because almost everybody is back. Um, he is a guy who makes some sense on a lot of levels. He's obviously done well on the West Coast. You know, he's worked in Seattle from his time under Pete Carroll. He's coached in the Big Ten, where obviously they're going to because he was on Jim Harbaugh's staff at Michigan. Now, I know that Arizona has has offered him, you know, a new contract. They want him there, but nothing has been finalized or finished on that front from what I'm told. So I think he's a guy that I would expect they would look at if they, you know, if they don't just go to Grubb. Um, there's a couple other names that I think are also really strong candidates. Lance Leipold done an amazing job at Kansas and done an amazing job everywhere he's been. That he's you know never worked out here on the West Coast, but Lance Leipold wins wherever he goes. I mean, if they if if Alabama didn't get Kalen DeBoer, that's who I would have thought they should have gone to next with Lance Leipold. He's that good of a coach. Um, and then there's a, the other name I think would be a real option. Maybe is Chris Kleiman is another guy who you know did really well at the lower divisions, won national titles at North Dakota State, done really well at Kansas State, won a Big 12 last year and won, won nine games this year. So, you know, I could see him as, as another, you know, legitimate candidate. I, and my point here is they have really good options right now, I think, going forward, whether it's, you know, whether it's do you give Grubb the chance or do you try to grab Jed Fish or, you know, can you, you know, can you get one of these other guys? I think it's, I, I think they have a lot to sell, and I think they have. I think they will have good candidates who could be in play. 